recently bought some AT Tiny 85 microcontrollers off eBay. Uh, I was going to build a small sensor unit put out in my garden, maybe connect up to an online website so I can uh, monitor how the garden's going remotely in terms of temperature and humidity. Now, these are the microcontrollers as they arrived. They look pretty good. No obvious signs of wear and tear. And I paid $1.12 each for those, which is pretty reasonable um, on eBay. Uh, they do range a little bit higher than that. But that's not an unreasonable expectation that if the item was advertised as being new, that it would actually be new. But uh, the truth appears slightly different. This is one of the AT Tiny ICs here. Now, as you can see, these legs don't look normal. Although they're shiny here and do appear to be quite normal in this area, up close you can see that there's a lot of abrasion here and at the base of the leg. There also appear to be some um, uneven areas here, as though some solder left over from the desoldering process has been abraded. Now, I'm not blaming this vendor. Um, I I have ordered quite a lot of stuff from them before, I've never had any problems, so I'm going to give them a benefit of doubt in this case. And since I got a good price for these ICs, I'd like to keep them. So I think the best way to go about doing that will be to stick some code on them and see how they run. However, in practice that process didn't uh, end up being as straightforward as I would have hoped. No problem, I thought. I've got one of these little boards here. Uh, it has a USB connection and also a um, what looks like a programming header at the other end and the socket for the AT Tiny. Now, first problem USB is simply for power. So it's basically to run the uh, AT Tiny once it's been programmed, and this also doubles as a prototyping board. It can, however, be programmed through the header. So, um, using the USB ISP. However, that's no problem. I got one of these little units here. This is a USB ISP, and it appears to have the correct pinouts for the header on the programming board. However, the slight difference is USB ISP and the USB ASP and they are slightly different. Now, both of these appear in the uh, list of programmers that are available to you uh, when you're trying to program the AT Tiny once you've set that up in the Arduino IDE. Now, at the bottom of the page, there's an interesting aside here in that some of the advertisements for these boards do indicate uh, that additional software may be required. As you can see here, support software AVR Fighter PROG SPI 1.72. Now you would assume that that is installed, but it doesn't seem to be compatible for whatever reason. So this doesn't appear to use the standard USB ISP um, firmware. So I haven't yet been able to program my um, AT Tiny to test that out using this board. This actually has an AT Tiny uh, 44 on it, or a 44U. So it's quite a nice little board in its own right. However, installing it um, in the USB port simply results in the primary USB port refusing to accept the device. And in the second port, which was a recommended fix of that, um, while it doesn't cause a problem in terms of it continually rebooting them, this board, uh, it doesn't appear to recognize it at all. Now the actual software that goes with this, so I'm not going to get too much into this because I decided to actually just um, set up Arduino as ISP through the Nano, but there is some software listed at the bottom of the page for these particular devices, and probably um, burning that onto this would actually solve the problem, but uh, life's too short. So I've actually ordered a proper USB ISP and I'm hoping that will fix the problem. After much fiddling about and 
uh, dead ends in terms of help on the internet, I did manage to finally get my ATtiny program through the Nano. Now this is the setup after the ATtiny is programmed. Now what you have to do, unfortunately due to the small number of pins on the chip, is if you want to run the LED on the blank application that you've downloaded, you do actually have to remove some of the wiring. So at the moment, the only connection between the Nano itself and the ATtiny is simply to provide power. So as you can see, the ATtiny is uh, running the Blink application quite successfully. So what I'll show you how, how to do now is actually get this set up and running properly. Uh, it's quite a lot of people on the internet who seem to be having trouble with this. Uh, so hopefully I can point a few of them in the right direction, even if they're not using the Nano for this. The first part of uh, setting up the Arduino IDE for ATtiny programming is actually installing the additional files to support that. Now I found the ones I used on the site here, which is highlowtech.org. I'll put the links to all of these sites in the description for this video. Now I'm using a slightly older version of the IDE, so I need to install the files manually. But have a read through this, and it will give you the instructions for the version of the IDE that you're using. For example, 1.64 and later, you can actually specify the URL of the files directly in the uh, IDE itself. For the earlier versions, prior to 1.64, you actually need to go in and download a file from this link here. And clicking on this will take you to the uh, GitHub site. Oh, in this case it won't. It appears to actually download the file. Uh, but you can visit that site if you want to have a look at the documentation that goes to the project. So once you've saved that, you can simply follow the instructions to install the uh, additional files manually. And that will then give you more options. Uh, the screenshot here is for the 1.64 and later. Uh, the software I'm using is slightly different. Once the additional files are installed, you'll notice that here in the board menu, you now have an ATtiny option here at the bottom. This means when you look at the processes available, you get the full range of ATtiny versions. Uh, there is a much larger range than this available ATtiny. These are the ones that the Arduino IDE support uh, by loading that additional file. Uh, I believe you can also download files which enable you to program the fuller range of ATtiny's or you can use the AVR IDE for that. Clocks, initially all of new all new ATtiny's are set to 1 MHz, that's the default. And you have a number of options here for internal and external clocks. The version I'm using runs at 20 MHz and as well as that for any of the other versions you need to set the internal fuses and there are instructions for doing that on that site that we looked at. Um, a little earlier. And these options for serial and COM ports. Looking at sketches, once you've installed those files, what you can do is connect up your um, Arduino. In this case, I'm using the Nano. The first thing you need to do is install the Arduino ISP uh, sketch on that. This will allow your Arduino to act as an in-system programmer. Now, having done that, we can't immediately go and wire it up, and I'll show you why. Back to our high low tech site, we get down to the section here on connecting the ATtiny. Now, what it says, you need to provide power to the ATtiny and connect it to your programmer. That is connecting MISO, MOSI, SCK, Reset, VVC, VCC and ground of the programmer. Now, the key problem here is SCK, or the clock pin. And a lot of the instructions I've read actually refer to that. Now that might be true in a lot of cases, but I've seen a few examples on the internet of people having issues with a lack of sync. And I think that could be due to this, prob this recommending this pin here as the one that's used for the clock. Let's go and have a look at some diagrams. We can see in this diagram the Arduino Uno, the ICSP programming header, has the SCK, MISO, and MOSI pins. That's great. If we're using the programmer, those will be the pins that we'd be using. 
reset pin likewise is quite obvious. But you notice here that we also have the options for these pins on uh, D11, 12, 13. Let's go and have a look at the diagram for the Nano. Here is the Nano. Again, reset. That's quite obvious. We do have ICSP here, but we won't be using that in this context. The SCK pin in this case is D13. MISO is D12. MOSI is D11. So it all seems reasonably straightforward. We need to connect these two pins here this one and reset as we've been instructed to. So let's go and do that and see what happens. Just before we do that let's go back to the high low tech page and just confirm what we're doing is correct. Now in this diagram here there's a link at the bottom connecting an Arduino as ISP to the ATtiny. So clicking on that takes you to this page here. Now just go through this for a minute just to confirm what we were looking at before. The other thing you need to know is that you need a 10 microfarad capacitor. Now that will go between reset and ground on the Arduino and it just makes sure that the reset period is sufficient to reset both the ATtiny and the Arduino. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. Now this also has some instructions on uh, making slight changes to the Arduino ISP sketch and what I'd recommend is that you read through that uh, just to check and see that you can find the code for the pinouts and just confirm that your board is actually correct. I actually came across, uh, found the cause of the problem I was having by doing that. Now let's just go back down here. This actually gives you detailed instructions instructions for connecting one of the other Arduino boards to the AT Tiny on the breadboard. Again, it mentions pin 13 SCK, pin 12 MISO, pin 11 MOSI. That also mentions reset specifically. So, just to confirm, those are the pins that every, the site says we need to connect and practically every other one. Okay, firstly I've just put the Arduino Nano on the breadboard and I've connected the USB cable. Now you notice I've put the 10 mark fad electrolytic capacitor there between ground and reset but as I'm not utilizing the uh, AT Tiny board at this stage I've removed the reset from the reset connection between the reset pin on the Arduino and the AT Tiny. So let's go and install the ISP software and then we'll get the board connected up as per the recommendations and just see what happens using those recommendations. Okay, we've got our nano board connected up now. So what we'll do initially, just run a bit of uh, a blank sketch up to it, just to make sure everything's cleaned out. should find the uh, play doesn't take very much time. Now, if you have been doing any AT Tiny programming, make sure you remove that 10 microfarad capacitor between ground and reset. Otherwise what you'll find is your upload will take a very long time, it'll time out and you'll get an R-Sync error. Okay, that looks clean now, so let's go to the file menu and select from the examples the Arduino and System Programmer sketch. And you'll notice at the top here, it actually specifies the pins. You'll notice here again it mentions the SCK pin. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. I think you'll probably find that in most cases this will work on other boards. But if it doesn't, you can try the technique I've used to get around the problem that will show up. It also mentions some additional uh, pins that you can put LEDs on to indicate the status of your uh, program run. Okay, we'll upload this to our Nano now. And that's completed successfully. So our Nano is now ready to act as an in-system programmer. 
Okay, that's the Nano connected up as per the instructions. The uh, turn microphone capacitor is back between reset and ground. We've not got a ground running to the AT Tiny. And also the reset is now running to pin 1. But the correct pins connected to MISO, MOSI and SCK and VCC. So we should be able to go ahead and program that. The extra orange connector there is just a connector for the LED uh, for testing once the blink code is uploaded to the ATtiny. Okay, so that's all connected and ready to go. Now let's get set up for our program. Now we want to upload the blink sketch, so let's grab that. Basics, blink. Now, one important thing is we have to change from pin 13 to pin 0 on the AT Tiny. And if you don't want to edit your um, standard blink sketch, just don't save that before you upload it. Let's just check that. And that's fine. Now, in tools, we now want to change to AT Tiny. Processor is the AT Tiny eighty five clock one megahertz. That's fine. Port will be COM seven. The programmer will be the Arduino as ISP. Okay, so we're good. Let's try and upload that and see how we go. Ah, yikes, invalid device signature, what can this mean? Uh, programmer, Arduino as ISP, looks good. Port COM7, clock good, that all seems to be fine. I wonder what the problem is here. Just go through and check everything again. One thing has been mentioned in the past that is that sometimes the board doesn't reset if you're changing from uh, one of the standard boards to Tracy Tiny. So let's try that. Uh -huh. Change it back to Tracy Tiny. Tiny board, good. Processor 80 tiny 85. Clock. Comp 7. Arduino as ISP. Should be great. Let's see. Okay, programmer is not responding. I can see why people are having so many problems. Okay. Do you notice we are getting a different problem to what we were before? Okay, let's change to different processor. Tiny eighty five. Board, clock, port, programmer. Okay, let's try again. Take 
been a while, so it still can't be working correctly. But this is not entirely unexpected because we were following the wiring instructions that have been published online. I wonder what the error will be this time. Okay, now this time we're getting a different error and it appears that the board's been retried, timed out after 10 attempts and it's not getting a async. So we seem to get a full range of errors here today. Uh, the previous one I think was caused by the fact that the settings weren't being updated correctly when you changed between the options here. Uh, program is correctly set so that's not the problem. So this is the point I was at before. So I went and had a look at the code in the uh, Geno ISP sketch. Didn't seem to be a solution there. Then I found a diagram online that seemed to throw some light onto this. Having looked around for some time I discovered an article on uh, programming the ATtiny using Arduino as ISP from a Nano. Now, what you notice here, this is the reset pin, but crucially it isn't connected to the reset pin on the Arduino. It's connected to pin 10. Now, thinking about it, what you actually need to do when you're programming a device like this is have control over the reset. So, at the moment, the reset pin on the Arduino is connected to the ATtiny. So this isn't possible. This can't happen. What is Arduino pin 10? I hear you say, which is a good question. Arduino D10 is in fact the SS high pin. So this isn't actually the reset pin that was used previously. Uh, SS high. And the ever intriguing thing is that this doesn't appear to be in the code for the Arduino ISP, although it must be in there somewhere. It's not actually listed as one of the main um, pins involved in the process. So anyway, let's go ahead and connect up that and set a reset and see what we get. Okay, so here we are again. Uh, change the reset to the SS on the Arduino. So let's see how we go now. Okay, that's compiled fine. Let's see if the upload's working this time around. And it's done. And let's see what a successful upload actually looks like on the board. There was practically no LED activity the first time around. Okay, and here we go. Okay, I think that's pretty unequivocal. That's definitely a lot more activity. The upload seems to have been included. Let's rewire things and see if the LED is blinking now. Okay, just rewired that to remove the minimum number of wires. And you'll notice that the eighty tiny is now running the LED. So clearly the problem was the fact that the uh, instructions in the code and online were incorrect. Uh, let's see exactly what that SS pin is. Okay, slight apologies here. I went back to the Arduino ISP code uh, and I did recall before that when I was looking at this I did notice that pin 10 was mentioned although it does have slave reset uh, so that was a little bit confusing until I found that later documentation that definitely said that it needed to be connected to pin 10. So apologies to that, but so you'll see that these uh, pin designations in the actual code are correct. Uh, but you will have noticed that the instructions on the site we were looking at before and several of the others that I've examined do actually indicate that you should be connecting to the reset and not pin 10. Now it could be that pin 10 is reset on some of those devices Let's have a quick look and then looks, let's have a look at exactly what SS actually does. Now having a look at the documentation, 
uh, SES doesn't seem to be related to any specific function that's working here. It seems to be um, there simply for the SPI interface. So I'd say it's probably not directly connected, but pin D10 has simply been used uh, for some time of type of reset signal that is being sent to the ATtiny during programming. Okay, now as well as the SS pin being on the Nano, uh, as you can see here it's also on the Uno, and it is indeed on pin 10. Now, let look at several more sites, and this is the <coughs> pin configuration recommended here. Now Arduino without bootloader, interestingly enough. Um, this is for the ICSP and reset is listed here, which is indeed it is on the ICSP. However, Arduino's ICSP programmer, that's pin D10, which is not reset. But you'll notice that on the other site we are looking at, uh, it definitely mentions that it should be connected to the reset pin or D10 on other programmers. Now this is of course confusing because pin D10 is in no way reset. So I suspect a lot of people reading that have assumed that you actually need to connect to RST and not D10. And that would certainly play, explain a lot of the errors you see mentioned in the forums and in other locations. So the important thing, make sure you connect to D10 that will avoid all of the errors that you've uh, seen demonstrated uh, when I was attempting to do the programming earlier. Okay, now this is back to the high low tech site and as you can see this one mentions Arduino pin 10 or reset. So ignore the reset unless you're doing uh, programming something which out a bootloader in it and simply connect to pin 10. Don't be fooled by the reset. A lot of people, including me, seem to be. Well, that seems to have cleared up that mystery. I hope this has helped someone out there who is having the same problem trying to get their ATtiny programmed. I've since gone back and rechecked the other two MCUs and those seem to be working well, so those won't be going back. Anyway, see you next time.